Hi, this is Thomas Mashad. Welcome back to Foundations of Web Design. In this video, we're going to talk about adding our first global elements to our HTML document in Komodo Edit. All right, so I have everything closed out and I want to relaunch Komodo. And so once again, I'm just going to go back into my Finder window and I can go into my Applications folder and find Komodo. Now, if you want to, don't want to keep going back and forth and trying to find Komodo and just trying to make sure that you know where it's at down in here, yeah, on the Mac, there's uh, one of the things you can do after you launch this, it's going to ask you if you want to show your recent files and projects. Might be a good thing to do of being able to see what we just did. And this is what we just did was create this index.html. But if you don't want to keep going to the applications folder, all you have to do is down in the dock, is to right click or control click on the icon of the application. Go up into show options and say keep in dock. And then that on the Mac will allow you, even if you quit out of Komodo accidentally, if you didn't have the applications folder open, you can just go right down here to Komodo edit and click on it and launch it. There's also another couple, there's a few other tools uh, one on the Mac that is really good for a quick launch is called Alfred. So if I quit out Komodo, I can do a keyboard shortcut that launches Alfred. You can see this little, uh, little search icon here with a little top hat and bowler. And I can start to type out Komodo, edit, hit return, and that will also launch Komodo. Down into the, uh, the video resources down below, I'll provide a link if you're on the Mac operating system for a quick launch. Uh, applications such as Komodo or for uh, Alfred sorry not Komodo all right so we want to open up our recent files and projects yes we do and the recent file that we just did or that we created was the chapter one and the foundations of web design maybe you just have the chapter one folder and you have the index.html so I'm gonna double click on that so we have our empty HTML document okay and in Komodo, you can do a couple of things. You can actually preview your document. You can pre preview it in Komodo, which isn't necessarily a bad thing for some basic websites. And you'll notice that it puts, puts a little website down in here, a web browser, that if you start typing, and I'll just put a little, yeah, I'll put some words here, and I'll click on save, and it refreshes it right down in there. Okay, now I'm not going to say that Komodo is the best browser to check in, especially when you're going to be working on some more advanced stuff. Some basic stuff, not too bad, but um, Komodo really isn't our first choice to wanting to view. It's best once you install the other browser applications such as Firefox, Safari, Google, and Opera, uh, Google Chrome, and Opera. Komodo recognizes that you have those. Uh, browsers installed in your operating system and you can simply say select uh, Safari and it'll say do you want to preview this file and previewing Safari application yep perfectly fine I'm gonna click on preview and it will open up Safari and it will look at your desktop folder and it will look to your index.html and there is the little words that we typed on, into our HTML document and saved Okay, so it's really a good thing to having these other browsers installed. If you haven't already done so, make sure you go back to that first, very first video that I talked about installing Firefox, Chrome, and Opera. Okay, if you're on the Mac, Safari is already unloaded. If uh, or already loaded, if you're on Windows, uh, you already have Internet Explorer, and preferably if you can work with Internet Explorer version nine and above, that would be great. Uh, version 8 is okay, but uh, certainly for some of the things we're going to be doing later on, you definitely want the more recent versions of Internet Explorer. All right, so let's go back to our HTML document. Words is not a global HTML element. So our first global HTML element is that we want to state what type of document that we're working with. And working with an HTML document, the doc type element is uh, it, it helps the browsers understand what type of document that we're working with. And you'll notice that I have this little left angle bracket and then we have the exclamation point and then doc type. But you'll notice that Komodo actually recognizes as soon as I put that angle bracket in, 
plus the exclamation point it says are you sure it, you know maybe you want to do the doc type it looks like maybe you're doing a doc type element and if i hit tab it will automatically put in the word doc type for me now uh, in previous versions of html it was usually written in all uppercase but you can certainly write out doc type all lowercase and it's not a bad thing to do because all of your other elements are going to be really wanting to be written in lowercase uh, text. So what type of doc type are we creating? We're creating an HTML doc type and that's all we need to do. That's the great thing is is that doc types used to be much much longer. We had to write out a whole bunch of stuff but now with HTML5 all we need to state to the browser that to uh, recognizing this as an HTML5 document all we have to do is write out HTML and then we're gonna put in our closing angle bracket. So pretty easy there. Okay, now the other global elements that each of your documents are going to have is the element that's going to follow directly after the doc type is the HTML element. Okay, and all other elements are contained within the HTML element. An element contains an opening tag and a closing tag. Sometimes we have self closing tags, and we'll take a look at those in just a moment. The doc type is the only element that resides outside of the HTML element. Well, doc type, as you can see, is a self-closing element. There is no closing doc type. All right, so what do we have within the HTML element? We have the head element. And the cool thing about Komodo is, is it automatically places in the closing element for us, or the closing tag. So we have the head, and the head really kind of allows the browser to know what's kind of going on, what it needs to load, uh, what type of information about the website that there is, that more or less people do not see displayed. Now there is one thing in the head element that is displayed in the browser that we'll take a look at, which is the title element, but uh, for the most part, everything else is kind of hidden behind the scenes. Think of this as kind of like the brains of the outfit. The other element that is required is the body element. Okay, and once I close that angle bracket, it closes the tag for me as well. So we have the head element and we have the body element. So we have the opening and the closing body element. And this, in what's contained within the body is the content that people see within the browser. That's really all of your words, your text, your graphics, all that type of stuff is contained within the body. Now there's nothing that needs to go in between the head and the body. There is no neck element. So we do not want to place any elements in between the closing head element or the closing head tag and the opening body tag. Okay. So the other element that is required in the head element is the title element. So I'll put the title here. And what I'm just going to type out is my first website. So this could be something, you know, as far as like for CNN, they have CNN um, news world and headlines up there. Okay. So the title element is what is displayed in the title bar or in a tab. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this and we're going to preview this into a browser. When we have a little asterisk next to the document name up here, we know it's not saved, but if I do a Command S or a Control S on the PC, that little asterisk is going to disappear. Now I'm going to preview this, so I'm going to come to the little globe icon, but I want to click on the arrow, and I'm going to open this, and you can open this within any browser application that you have. Um, maybe I'll just go ahead and open this up in Safari for right now, just so we can see it. And you'll notice that in the title bar, my first website appears right at the very top of the browser. Okay, so that's Safari. Let's take a look and see what another browser looks like. I'm going to open up this time. I'm going to preview it in Chrome. So I'm going to click on Preview. And Chrome, you'll notice that it has no large title bar, but it has tabs. And so there's an opening tab here that I'm just going to close really quick. And you'll notice that I have no large title bar. The title bars are within the tabs. By default, Chrome just you know starts out with a tab, okay? And so that's the way that it's gonna look at, like in Chrome. So this is why I ask you to install different browsers so you can kind of see what other people are going to see using these different browsers. 
So you'll notice that we don't see anything within our body. That's perfectly fine for right now. We've got other things that we still need to develop. But really, this is your uh, the basic set of the global elements. The other things that you might end up considering to putting in uh, are attributes, such as the lang attribute, dealing with language. And that can uh, be uh, to where we set the, the language of our website. And we have like English en hyphen us. Uh, would be one language. You could just put in English if you wanted to. There's also English like UK, but um, we have the lingu language attribute, so we could just type out English, uh, EN hyphen US, I believe it is, or you can just leave it as EN for right now. Um, other things would be the meta element, meta, and we have a character set attribute that we place in. And in the book, it talks about what is the character set. That is all of the, the numbers, the letters, all of that type of stuff. Uh, and it can be the Latin character set. It could be a Chinese character set. It could be a whole bunch of different types of uh, characters of different languages, Arabic or something like that. And the character set value is UTF-8. And that gives us a broad spectrum of characters to use. That's all you really need to know about that. Now the meta tag, all I do is put in the closing angle bracket. There is no closing meta tag. This is a self-closing tag. Now in times past you might have seen something like this. You no longer have to put in that uh, slash at the end, that right leaning slash. So this is perfectly fine right now. So we have the attributes. Attributes always are reside within the opening element or the opening tag of an element. Within a meta, it's a self-closing, so it is residing right within the meta element. So this is your global structure for pretty much all of your websites. You have your doc type, you have your HTML element. The HTML element holds all other elements, the head and the body. The head is what's really kind of controlling the brains of the outfit which has the meta element as well as the title element. The title element is and needs to be within the head element. It is required. And then we have the body element, and that's where we're going to place all of our content, our images, our text, graphics, videos, whatever you have. Okay, so here we have our global setup, and from here we can start to add in a few other elements, say like if we want to add in our website, my for our into our uh, body element, my first website uh, by, and then you can put your name, okay? And if I save this, and if I view this in the browser, one of the things I want you to notice that even though I put these on separate lines, watch what happens. I'll open this up in, say, Chrome. I'll say preview, and you'll notice that it all is on one line. Really interesting, because we don't have any structure to our text at this point, okay? And in order to add that structure, maybe what we just do is we can put in some text elements, such as a header one. Now, it automatically closes it, okay? And so I'm just gonna cut that first, or that, that closing element and put it in a, on the other side. So what might be good is if I know that I'm gonna create a paragraph, and then I'll put in my paragraph element, and then I can put in my content after that. That's the one thing that, you know, with Komodo Edit that I just don't totally like is that, you know, you have your content in there and you put your tags, it closes the tags even before your, it gets around your content, unfortunately. All right, so now I have that, um, or let's see, let's see, make this a header two here, okay? So I have my opening header two, and my closing header two. We have different levels of heading elements, and we'll talk about that later. So I have that, I'm gonna go back over to Chrome, I'm gonna hit refresh, and now you'll notice that it looks a lot different. It's because we have these elements that mark up our site, that give our site structure and definition of our content. We'll get much more into text elements and other ways to marking up our website, but at least now you know um, your basic global elements that you'll use for every single HTML document.